This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing you back a returning guest, and I'll tell you what, I'm super excited to have him back on the show, and I'll tell you why. In 2017, this company did 541,000 in revenue. In 2018, first quarter, quarter over quarter, year over year, they did 1.2 million. That's over 120% increase. We're talking no other than Medicine Man Technologies, Inc. They trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol MDCL. Take a look at them. And with us today to talk about his company is the CEO of the company, Brett Roper. Brett, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on today. You know, can you talk about your your revenue trajectory for the balance of 2018? As I mentioned earlier, you guys had an increase year over year, and you guys had five consecutive quarters of top-line growth. What gives there? Well, we're obviously getting more and more clients and more and more attraction for our nutrients and some of our other um, elements that we have within our company's framework of deployables. So we certainly expect... Although we, we don't have anything out officially, Q2, we expect revenues to grow again over Q, Q1. And as we move into the, you know, the third and fourth quarters, we have some very interesting opportunities that we expect to hopefully get closed in the third and fourth quarter that should hopefully allow us to see our revenues grow uh, by that three or four X again over this past year. So we're excited about the opportunities. We, we're, we're putting some pretty good numbers down. And uh, in particular, we have a couple of really good opportunities that we're pursuing right now that should add substantial revenue and income to the company this year. You know, this industry, uh, I still feel we're in the, the first inning, but it's come, you know, leaps and bounds. You recently put out a press release that you're working with a, a cannabis growers network, uh, Solus Tech. They provide lighting. What are you guys doing w- with that contract and how does that help your bottom line? Well, it's, it's an agreement of sorts that we... While there are probably a number of great double-ended lamps out there, Solace Tech, Phantom, Gavita, Yuzhou, to name a few, the, the Solace Tech lights, we think, have a better warranty, have good performance metrics. And while we tend to be somewhat agnostic on most of the equipment that we recommend, we've really felt like the Solace Tech lights um, are uh, one of the best of breed, if you will, in the double-ended lamp industry at this time. So we, we tend to gravitate towards recommendation of those lamps. We've also recently, and we'll be announcing this here in the next week or so, entered into an, a nice agreement with Black Dog LEDs. They have a very good LED lamp that we've tested and found gives us really good performance, not quite on the DE level, but the Black Dog units in comparison to the three or four of the brands we've tested over the last year are, are really a, a definitely a step above those other elements that we've tested. Brett, if you had to pick like uh, one element that would probably be the greatest impact on your future revenues, what would that be? Well, we've, we've always focused on growing efficiency and, and helping people and clients to, to become uh, better, uh, more efficient growers. And for that, we get a small piece of that delta, if you will. But as we move forward, the company has begun to take on uh, proposals where it will be managing and really touching the plant as we move into the future. So when you look at Colorado and recently uh, House Bill 18-1011 uh, failed under Governor Hickenlooper due to, uh, you know, obviously he has some perspectives that I'm not privy to, but we expect that uh, that regulatory element to revise itself and be back in uh, consideration next year for a new governor, which would mean that if it passes, Uh, public companies could actually own and and licenses here in Colorado. And as Colorado's kind of been a hotbed and the test bed for the industry over the last 10 years, we're beginning to look at opportunities wherein we would manage large-scale growth and facilities as a part of our services offering. And we believe that that type of, of growth in our company that comes from directly involving ourselves and touching the plant, so to speak, similar to TerraTech and a few others in the space, will provide us with, you know, not just a few million dollars of revenue, but 
hopefully tens of million dollars of revenue and growth um, as we move through the year. You know, Canada is going to recreational marijuana, I believe, sometime in October. Is that going to do anything for you guys? Well, you know, the Canadian market's been really interesting to watch. Um, as I look at everybody from, you know, uh, Canopy to Tea God to Aurora to Organogram, all these large growers and LPs that are claiming to have, you know, a million, two million square feet, they're growing uh, obviously going to be growing a lot of cannabis in the next year or two. When you throw all those claims of performance together, as my last re- recollection of the 90-some-odd LPs already approved, it seemed to me if I took all those numbers together, uh, they can provide every man, woman, and child with probably an ounce of product every month. So <laughs> we're expecting the Canadian market, while it will likely be a little underserved initially, once the market matures, similar to what we've seen here in Colorado, Oregon, Washington State, and other uh, you know, areas, California in particular, we expect that marketplace to normalize. And while certainly we'd all like to be worth 100 times our revenue uh, uh, mark as Canopy and some of these other companies are worth, um, those companies still have a long ways to go to carve out a, a scheme that will get them profitable. I always like reading what Bruce and and Cam Batley and those folks are writing about their company. I respect them greatly, but I'm really going to be keenly interested to see what their path to profitability looks like over the next year or two. And I think that valuations of that marketplace are perhaps a little overheated. And I suspect that with that same metric, the U.S. marketplace is probably a little under uh, underwhelmed, if you will, or a little a little chillier than what might be normal. So we expect there to be a pretty good amount of vacillation over the next 18 to 24 months in the in the global marketplace, which obviously includes Canada and the U.S. markets and others abroad. And uh, looking at these things, we certainly wish everybody well, and hopefully their companies stand the test of time. But we've just seen too many precursor samples, such as Colorado and Oregon, where you reach an oversupply point and demand really uh, doesn't keep up with what production capabilities are. And with Canada's recent announcement to allow outdoor growing in one uh, one particular territory, that just kind of upsets the apple cart a little bit more, in our opinion. So we love the Canadians. They've been doing a great job. They've been leaders in the space as far as the legal side. And we're going to be really curious to watch how that industry evolves both there in Canada and what we see here in the U.S. and globally over the next 18 to 24 months. My guest today is Brett Roper. He's the CEO of Medicine Man Technologies, Inc. You can go to their website, find out more about their company at www.medicinemantechnologies.com. They trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol MDCL. Last time you were on the show, Brett, you know, we were talking about license agreements. Since then, you've signed five new license agreements. Uh, can you expand on that a little bit? And what does that mean to your uh, company? So since our last visit in February, um, our a single large-scale client in Ohio was awarded a license. And uh, they're actively in construction right now, Grow Ohio, uh, Grow Ohio Pharmaceutical. Um, that group is, was actually second highest score in the state. We have expansion plans that we've entered into with California clients and also new clients uh, in Michigan and elsewhere. So as we continue to gain more clients, it always brings us to an interesting, um, if you will, crossroads in that we have to continue to develop our team and grow our company's uh, skill set in order to be able to meet those demands. So uh, while we're growing and we're bringing on more clients, and some of those clients are a revenue share scheme where we're in if we get them certain levels of productivity our reward is only once we achieve a certain level of that uh, performance on a wholesale basis so it's pretty much a win-win for most of the clients that use our services in that capacity so in the industry here in the US you know a dollar a gram plus or minus is considered to be a pretty good cost of growing and here in Colorado and elsewhere you've seen uh, price pressure from you know, two or three years ago at 3000 more uh, on a wholesale pound dropped to less than $1,000 uh, later this, this year as we move into summer. And so that compression has gotten very difficult for a lot of companies to survive. So it's the low-cost production with the highest quality standards that seems to be winning the day. And over time, we expect our clients to hopefully remain uh, competitive in that venue.
you know, you've had five consecutive earnings growth quarter over quarter. Can you give us some perspective on the apparent disparity in valuations in comparing maybe uh, Canada and U.S. public um, companies that, that trade? Sure. So we were talking earlier about Canopy Growth, an excellent company. Bruce and his, his group have done a great job in growing their, their reach both in Canada and internationally. And I think the last time I peeked at Bruce's numbers, they were getting more than 100 times their revenues as far as the market cap. So uh, you look at, a, I think it was $80 million the last fiscal year. And I think last time I peaked, they were a nine plus billion dollar market cap company, which once again, stands to more than 100x of revenues. You look at a, a Terratech here, TRTC, that touches the plant. And uh, you look at their company, which I believe they're making great strides and doing a good job. They're 40 plus million dollars of revenue. And I think they're getting multiples of five or six X. So, you know, there's there's a interesting disparity in the valuations. And once again, uh, Canopy as it grows, obviously is losing money to the point that they reach uh, a, a break-even point, just as Terratech is. But both of those companies have a similar metric in that their, you know, their revenues are growing and their, their costs are stabilizing, but they're both losing a relatively same amount of money. And yet the valuations for the two companies are quite divergent. So we we kind of suspect that perhaps, you know, once again, the Canadians are perhaps a little overheated, a little overvalued. The U.S. marketplace people, they're doing a job probably are a little undervalued. Uh, our company right now, I believe, based upon a couple of days ago, was probably getting 10x of last year's revenue stream. And that's a decent number for us. But, you know, we hope to eventually achieve uh, some sort of uh, metric that's based more on standard financial metrics, which are probably several years off. But, you know, whether we're talking about cap rates or whatever you want to use as far as a PE ratio, et cetera, right now there's no real standard in the industry. So most people kind of point to multiples of revenue for those companies that have an eye towards gaining profitability. So that disparity is there. And I think a big part of that is the legality in Canada versus the technical federal prohibition still in place today and the unknowns with regard to the U.S. marketplace, even though there's been some progress made. So I think once the U.S. marketplace can normalize and look at cannabis uh, as a federal element that goes defers back to states' rights, as we've seen under the, some of the proposals that have been floated, I think the U.S. marketplace will catch up quite quickly. And the Canadian marketplace should do well. I mean, they've got a, a lot of of growth ahead of them over the next year or two. It's going to be interesting just to see how crowded that market gets over time and what competitive influences uh, appear. Can you give our, our my audience, if you would, maybe a perspective of, of why you're dropping, you know, stepping down from CEO? Obviously, you're staying with the company. You're staying on the board. Right. So Andy Williams and I are kind of co-founders and CEO, COO, kind of whatever hat we had to wear over the last five years. And those that keep up with this know that we've swapped hats from time to time. Uh, as Mr. Williams had other demands on his time, he stepped down as our CEO a year ago. And I stepped into that role from the chief operating officer. Andy then took over chairmanship of the board, which was something that I had held. But we've been growing quite a bit over the last year or so. And as these international opportunities begin to manifest themselves, it's become clear to me that it's really a good time for our company to look at a searching for a good CEO that will help us uh, evolve, if you will, into this next generation of growth. And my best value is in, uh, you know, putting deals together, helping the company identify opportunities. And in fact, uh, we're on the home stretch of, a, of a, a, a license agreement with a Canadian group that's publicly traded, as we've disclosed in our prior um, uh, news releases that you know, that I've been working hard with over the last couple of months to get to a point that we can execute. We're also in pre-negotiations with a, a group out of Israel that is going to be doing a, a nice project in Malta. We're also in pre-negotiations for some European opportunities. So those require a lot of time, and it's time that our company now can afford to in, invest. And that time is going to be invested in the form of myself being able to bring those deals to the table to the board for board consideration. And obviously, I can't wear my CEO hat, my fundraising hat, my marketing hat, showing up at all the shows and, and being a big part of our future without seeing us grow to a, a better 
more stable officer uh, list, if you will. So I'm excited. I, I'm remaining with the company as a board member. We'll likely take on a role in business development that will probably be more internationally based. And these are things that will generate uh, strong revenues. One of the things that we're currently entertaining is, uh, you know, the initial revenues for the first payments for licensing uh, could be equal to what we had for a whole last year of revenues. So these are opportunities that if they're properly uh, brought along and, and, and fostered, they're going to provide good revenue and good long-term potential for the company and its growth. Well, Brett, you said a lot today. I think you've said it all. Uh, before I let you go, if I was listening to this uh, interview and I was looking to maybe go buy your stock, why should I go buy your stock today? Well, I think we're a little undervalued at today's price. Our stock is like many in this industry, seen a little bit of a downward trajectory over the last couple of months. I think we're at a point right now in that dollar thirty, give or take range, that uh, that price I think is a great price point. And uh, I think anybody that sees our future the way we do and can understand our growth plans, I think as we move forward into the rest of the year, we're going to continue to add new revenues, new revenue cycles, hopefully achieve a multiple of uh, 3x of last year's revenue and hopefully be able to reach a point of sustainable profitability as well. We've been highlighting Medicine Man technology here on Stock Day. You can find them on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol MDCL. Brett, thank you so much for your time. I wish you nothing but continued success. Thanks for your time today and look forward to next time around. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or the station.